So finally, we're here to study about plate tectonics or the basics of plate tectonics. Now, we've talked about the continental drift theory, the layers of the Earth, the active Earth, and the idea of seafloor spreading and evidence for seafloor spreading. Now, we're going to talk about, put all this together in the concept of plate tectonics. Now, because of seafloor spreading, the plates are moving because of the movements of the inside, in, inner layers of the Earth. And all this pressure from the inner core and mantle moving around with the energy from, the, from gravity, which is heating up the inner core of the Earth. By the way, I didn't mention this, but when we talk, when we talk about the formation of the Earth, we talk about several reasons why the Earth is warm. It's warm because of leftover energy from the formation of the planet from all those collisions with asteroids. It's warm because of gravity compression of the inner layers, creating, creating the heating of the in, inner core. It's warm because of radioactive decay of, of radioactive atoms in the, in, the, in the mantle in the core of the Earth. All right, so there's several reasons why the Earth's inner core are actually warm. But it's cooling down by conduction to space, losing that heat over thousands and thousands of years. And the heat comes from the core to the crust by convection of the mantle, and we talked about this in previous uh, videos as well. And we're going to talk about a little more about that right now. But the idea is because of this heat that's coming from the inside of the Earth, it's like an egg that's being under so much pressure from the inside. By, if you boil an egg on the microwave, this will happen. The egg will pop because of all the pressure that's happening on the inside. The same thing happens to the Earth. The Earth's energy inside is so strong that it causes the surface of the Earth to crack in pieces, under the buckling under the pressure of the inside. And as you can see, all of these pieces are named here on the screen. Um, and these are what we call the tectonic plates. And plate tectonics is the study of how these plates moved in relationship to each other. Okay, so you see the tectonic plates. There's some are larger than others. And they move in relationship to each other in different ways. Now, before we can do that, quick review. Remember, the plates are actually pieces of the lithosphere or blocks of the brittle outside of the Earth, which includes the crust and the upper mantle. And then, underneath that, you have this plastic asthenosphere, which flows, dragging the lithosphere with it. And it's flowing because the mantle convection, which you see in the top right here, is actually dragging the asthenosphere to the, around as hot mental material rises and it touches the crust or the lithosphere, it cools down and as it becomes colder, it sinks back down to warm up again and we start the cycle. And then you essentially have these wheels of magma convection, almost like you would see in a lava lamp, flowing around the circles, causing the ridge to, uh, to occur or causing the subduction to occur because the crust is going to be moving because the, the actual stenosphere is going to be moving. So whenever you have a situation where magma flow is creating um, divergent zones, and you see that happening here, when the magma is moving, sliding past each other, you're going to cause the asthenosphere to move in opposite directions or stretch. And that's going to stretch the, the, the actual crust. And it's, the magma is then is going to be, make it easier then to, for the magma to melt the crust, bulge the crust upwards, and actually crack the crust, and then seep through and cause the crust to spread itself and create new crust in between. That's what we talked about when we talk about seafloor spreading. Meanwhile, whenever the magma currents actually hit each other, you're going to have the opposite happening. You're going to be sucking pieces of crust into the mantle and making them melt in what we call convergent zones. So these examples there are, sh are showing you how the different movements of the mantle is actually causing the movements of the asthenosphere, which then causes movements of the lithosphere, which then causes the lithosphere to crack, buck, buckle, hit each other, and things like that. So all these plates are in constant moving movement. Another thing that is important, of course, is the idea of oceanic versus continental crust. Remember that we talked about the fact that continental crust is going to be less dense than the oceanic crust is. So whenever the oceanic crust meets the continental crust, the continental crust will usually be on top and the, con and the oceanic crust will sink underneath. It's also a very important concept. Now, the number of plates. The cur currently, although this has been changing over, the, over billions of years, there are 15 plates. You can welcome to pause and count if you want. But you see 15 plates around the world. And what's more important too is see the plate patterns. You can see how they're moving next to each other. You see that some are going away from each other. You can see they're here because of the Mid-Atlantic Mid Mid Ocean Ridge. All of these plates are moving away from each other. You see more moving away over here, more moving away over here, uh, moving away here, some expansion happening here as well, or here as well. But then you also have some convergent zones, or zones where the plates are hitting each other. You can see several of them around the world, around here. There's some more here, 
right? Another convergence zone right there. So you see that there are both divergent and convergence zones like we talked about. And then sometimes you have astral zones where the crust is sliding past each other. And you can see that happening here. And we're going to talk about that in the next video, these different kinds of boundaries that we talked about. But how do you find these boundaries? How do we know the boundaries are there? How do you know it's in that place and not another place? Well, one of it should be obvious for you to you. Whenever you see a mid-ocean ridge, you know there's a divergent boundary happening there. So it's a, a, literally a rift in the surface of the earth. But some of the other ones might not be so obvious. So let's talk about how to identify the boundaries. Well, one of the most obvious ways to identify boundaries is by looking at the ridges. So if you look at the map of the earth, you will see all the ridges and, and all the trenches. Every time you see a ridge, it's divergent. Every time you see a trench, it's convergent boundary. So you can use that to find. So trenches and ridges are good ways to mark the boundaries of, of the things. In addition to that, you also have mountain ranges. When you look at a mountain range, it actually, what it is, is being caused by the earth folding because of a collision event. So when two plates hit each other, they, they fold. One goes underneath and the other one folds upwards. So all of these mountain ranges around the world tend to happen along the lines of convergent, of convergent zones. So it's, a, it's along the lines of convergence zones that you're going to get these large mountain ranges around the world. And you can see this large convergence zone around the Pacific, which creates island chains and mountain ranges. So island chains and mountain ranges can be used to, classify, to find locations of the Earth where you have buckling of the Earth and therefore folding because of collisions. Um, another way, of course, like I said, is to look at the volcanoes. Because every time you have buckling or cracking or rifting of the surface of the earth, magma is going to punch through those cracks and take advantage of that. So it's very common to find volcanoes in near those areas. Down here you see that ring of fire that forms around the Pacific because of a volcanic action around the rim. And look at the mountain ranges down here in the bottom as, as they mark the boundaries of the earth. And you can look at, compare those lines with the lines over here at the left, bottom left, and you can see how the, 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 the boundaries of the volcanoes and of the mountains both are causing, telling you that the, uh, that the boundary is there. And again, if, remember, you can also look at ridges and trenches as evidence for this. And finally, you can also look at past earthquake data. By looking at past earthquake data, you can actually see that earthquakes tend to happen more often near the boundaries where there's a lot of pressure in the rock and where the rocks are hitting each other or moving past against each other or moving away from each other, which creates a lot of pressure in the rocks, makes the rocks crack and rebound and things like that. So by using earthquakes, which you see up here, by using the mountain ranges and trenches, you see the mountain ranges here, by, use, by using the volcanoes as markers, and by using the positions of ridges and rifts and um, trenches, you can actually find a location of the boundaries in the world. And that's where we know where all the boundaries are. Okay. Now, in the next video, we're going to talk about the types of boundaries.